I'm Charlene Sun Rigby, CEO of Global Genes. I'm also the mom to a nine-year-old with a rare neurodevelopmental disorder called STXVP1. RareX is committed to breaking down silos and making sure that robust data is openly available for research. Our work supports and enables next generation advocates in their work to advance research and accelerate therapy development for rare diseases. Open science is particularly important for AI-driven solutions because access to data allows for the best and the brightest to create AI solutions that can breed the most impact for the healthcare system. Inherently, rare condition data sets are smaller. However, as scientists, we have the ability to change our approaches to be able to customize them to what exists in the real world, and that is our responsibility. The open data challenge is so important to our CHAMP1 families because it allows the data or the specific whys that we have access to right now to help us understand what's going on with our children, get into the hands of scientists, doctors, and folks that are studying ways to better the lives of those with genetic disorders, but also hopefully uh, look into cures and, and ways to improve, you know, whether it's neurological to physical well-being overall. So at Sage, we've been running open data science challenges uh, for many years now, and we found it's a great way to engage participants who may be unfamiliar with a new disease area and also exploit uh, this wisdom of the crowds effect. When we look at any particular disease, we only see a subset of those patients anyways. And when we look at rare diseases in particular, we don't have that many patients that have this disease in any given institution. The Open Science Data Challenge here really focuses on a smaller, high, higher quality data set to begin with. Uh, I'm really excited about this challenge. Um, you know, just you know, remembering the, the experiences with, with my daughter and her, uh, her journey, it was just fraught with uncertainty. By having this data challenge, we're really shining a light on it and bringing people to it, um, bringing, you know, academics, citizen scientists, large companies, small companies, and rally everybody around some of these um, core challenges that affect patients on a daily basis. My son, Alex, who is seven, he was diagnosed with a CACNA1A related disorder when he was six. He has ataxia, so his balance and coordination are impaired. He also has global developmental delays that include speech and both the fine and gross motor skills. And he also has some cognitive impairment. We're really proud to be part of the Accelerate Rare Open Science Data Challenge because we know that contributing Alex's information to RareX can only help researchers learn more about CACNA1A-related disorders. And we're hopeful that this initiative will bring together different scientists who can take on these rare diseases and help develop treatments to improve the quality of life for our kids and our loved ones. Check out our website and learn more about Accelerate Rare. Let's work together to uncover more insights to drive rare disease progress. Good morning. Uh, it's such an honor to be here this morning presenting the winners of Global Genes and RareX's first Open Science Data Challenge together with Dr. Ravi Bhargava. Ravi is a physician scientist at Roche Global, the founding sponsor of our Open Science Data Challenge. Ravi serves as the Global Medical Director at Roche, incorporating artificial intelligence, digital health, and emerging technologies. He also serves as the global lead of Roche's rare disease program and is passionate about developing partnerships between patients, the medical community, and technology experts. Ravi is also a co-PI of clinical trials and has developed care programs establishing global standards. I think you can see that Roche and Ravi in particular um, were just an incredible partner to us in this effort and I'm really delighted to introduce him and bring him to the stage. Thank you for the kind introduction, Carmen, and um, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Just um, allow me to share some of my thoughts around um, this accelerator or open science. So open science, as we understand, is a movement uh, that embodies transparency, 
inclusivity, and collaboration with the ultimate goal of making data publicly available and scientific knowledge accessible to all. Today, we stand before you not just to celebrate the remarkable approach, but to congratulate all the participants of the Acceleratory at Open Science Data Challenge, a true testament to the power of open science. This challenge was not a mere competition. It was a call to action, a rallying cry for researchers, data scientists, and patient advocates to come together with a collective effort to unlock the mysteries surrounding rare diseases. And the heart of this challenge lay in the power of data. So it was an invitation to the sharpest minds to identify new symptoms, to create cutting edge AI and machine learning algorithms for disease prediction, and to develop groundbreaking therapeutic hypotheses, all by tapping into the vast wealth of patient data available on the RearX platform. But what made this event uh, truly extraordinary was the spirit of collaboration that fueled it. Over 80 patient advocacy groups representing more than 55 rare disease communities joined forces. Over 130 challenge participants were registered, 24 teams were formed, and over 30 submissions were received from across the industry, scientific community, academia, and public-private institutions globally. Absolutely remarkable, isn't it? And above all, Patients and their family actively contributed their health data, becoming partners in a quest for knowledge and solutions. That's most important. This challenge was no sprint. It was a marathon. Months of intensive effort, deep thinking, and communication allowed for the vetting of research ideas and forging of bonds that will last well beyond this challenge and into the second and third challenge by the end of 2024. It demonstrated our unwavering commitment towards advancing the science and understanding of rare diseases step by step, question by question. This initiative has also opened doors wide for academic researchers, data scientists, and groups in biotechs. It has given them access to rare disease patient data in an open, pre-competitive environment. It has offered insights into the intricate biological mechanisms of neurodevelopmental diseases, fueling the advancement of research pipeline and ultimately the development of therapies. While we may not have uncovered blockbuster therapies overnight with this competition, but we have indeed sown the seed of progress. Let us continue to champion such initiatives, for they hold the promise of brighter tomorrows for those in need. Together, we will illuminate the path towards a future where rare diseases are no longer shrouded in mystery, but met with solutions born of knowledge, compassion, and collaboration. Congratulations to all participants of this challenge. Wherever you are, we are being live streamed. You all are real winners. You all are the torch bearers of hope and your work will light the way for countless others. Thanks to all for your efforts in joining us to realize our dream of bringing many more therapeutic and diagnostic solutions at much less cost to society. Let's continue doing now what patients need next, and let's continue to work tirelessly toward, towards our ultimate goal to ensure that no patient with rare disease is ever, ever left helpless hopeless and abandoned. Thank you. It's Carmen over. Thank you so much, Ravi. All right, before um, we get to the winners, I'm actually gonna take a step back and um, give you all just a little bit of background on uh, how we went about this challenge, why we went about this challenge, and what the, the challenge questions were that we posed to research uh, participants. So uh, here's a little infographic of uh, the open science life cycle. 
So if you look at number one, number one is data collection. This is super critical. You cannot ask data scientists, uh, AI scientists, you know, machine learning specialists, you cannot ask these researchers to do work on data that doesn't exist. So at RareX, uh, our community engagement team worked tirelessly side by side with the patient advocacy organizations that participated in this effort to really get across the messages of what we were trying to do with this data to get the data in. The data included patient reported outcome measures. It also included genetic data that we got um, from genetic test reports and curated. And we also uh, established partnerships with Citizen and with CORDS to bring data from those databases in. So data is the, the first piece um, and really formed many months of work in getting this started. Uh, the second piece is data analysis. So um, really ensuring that the data is highly structured, that it's in um, a manner that is uh, easy for researchers to be able to access and work on. This actually turned out to be in many ways, and Vanessa might cringe when I say this because I know it was not easy, but in some ways much easier than it would have been for many, many other groups taking this work on because the RareX platform and the data collection that we undertake was designed with this in mind from day one. So all of the data is highly structured. All of the data is aligned to research standards and all of the data essentially is in a numerical format. So we are really well primed to be able to offer up these kind of challenges today and moving forward. So the third piece is where we actually get to the data challenge, putting this data in the hands of researchers. And as Robbie mentioned, the, the definition of researcher is really quite broad. So um, that could be an academic clinician, that could be a, a biostatistician, uh, that could be somebody who doesn't work in healthcare at all, somebody who does machine learning and is used to thinking about problems in a very different kind of sphere. So we want all of them to come in and to offer their insights. And then the last one is knowledge utilization. And so we're not gonna talk about that today because we're, we're right here. We're right here at the cusp between three and four. We're gonna announce the winners today and then we're actually gonna work with these winners moving forward and in incorporating some of their ideas, some of their hypotheses and some of their solutions that they created um, to really put into place for the patient groups we support. So with that, um, somehow the numbers got mixed up, so these are all equally important, I suppose. Uh, so we had three question categories. I always call them one, two, and three, um, but I will try not to, because they're all one, apparently. So uh, the first one was to identify previously unrecognized phenotypes. I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna give you an example that one of the conditions, and this is very, very representative um, one of the conditions on our platform, there is an ongoing natural history study as a collaboration between two academic centers, and the largest publication that's ever been published out of that work has 14 patients in it. We currently have 140 on our platform. There is huge opportunity for us to learn from that, to learn from what patients and families are telling us about their own disease, um, but we, we need support in doing that. So we put this question out. Can you identify unrecognized symptoms in these rare disease communities? And on the flip side, we have some communities that were part of this challenge that only have 10, 10 individuals, because it's an ultra rare condition. And there's virtually nothing published about them. So can you pull out what are the critical symptoms in this condition? What is the spectrum of symptoms in this condition? What do we see frequently and less frequently? And do that in a statistically valid and meaningful way that we can reuse. So it's one. Two, can we shorten the diagnostic odyssey? So can, any, uh, can we use machine learning to create algorithms where we can look at all of the symptoms, the age of onset, the severity. Can we look at that and can we use that to predict diagnosis? Um, now, I'm gonna tell you my own personal bias with a, with a clinical genetics background is this was a win-win question. Because if someone can do this, that is important in shorting the, shortening the diagnostic odyssey. If the best minds in machine learning and AI technology cannot do this, 
that is just yet one more data point that we need earlier comprehensive genomic screening. Mm -hmm. And the third question is, can you generate useful insights for advancing therapeutic research? Now, this is our first open science data challenge, and we did not anticipate that we were suddenly going to get some blockbuster idea that would move into the clinic in a clinical trial. But we're looking for, for sparks, for ideas to move forward. So with that, um, here's just a little bit of stats of the actual uh, participation in the challenge. When I say participation, we had community participation and researcher participation. So I'm talking about the researchers. So we had 132 registered challenge participants. Together they formed 24 teams. We received 33 submissions. And now we get to announce the six winners. Okay, Ravi. <laughs> I really considered putting these in envelopes. <laughs> So, Ravi gets to be the first. Okay. So, best approach combining rear X and external data. The award goes to 3 billion team led by Van Chan Jiang, bioinformatics engineer, and Kyung Guel Lee, chief scientific officer at 3 billion Seoul, South Korea. <laughs> Congratulations. So, highlights of approach. Hold on, say it again. So, yeah, so their, their highlights of approach were used a variety of methods ranging from natural language processing to more traditional statistical approaches, used multiple external data sets, PubMed, OMIM, Orphanet, MGI, to find potentially under-recognized phenotypes, and suggested an approach to using animal model data together with human phenotype data. Congratulations. Okay, the second winner of this first challenge, challenge question number one, is for the best open source method to benefit rare disease research. And this award goes to the Chong Lab, lab team, led by Jessica Chong, the assistant professor in pediatrics at the University of Washington in Seattle. So like the last team, this team really took um, known statistical methods that had been used in other areas outside of medicine. So they took a statistical approach called TFIDF, which stands for Term Frequency Inverse Document Frequency, which I actually went and learned about. Uh, this is a technique that is more traditionally used in search engine um, uh, kind of optimization to find words uh, that are important in a specific document and to rank them. And so they really looked way outside of healthcare to pull that method in uh, and applied that really quite rigorously across both the RareX and the external data sets that we brought in. So um, their method, the reason that they get the um, best open source method is that they really provided a very elegant totally reproducible method that we will be able to have on our researcher platform moving forward and be able to use over and over again for any of the disease groups that we support. Very exciting. So most innovative approach to analysis of patient reported data. Systems biomedicine team at Marcel Medical Genetics led by Anis Boudot. CNRS Director of Research. Congratulations. So they used innovative approach to utilizing a statistical tool called Multi-X Rank, which uses an approach called Random Walk with Restart. This is a classical statistical method used to do things like uh, ranking web pages and content. This is a perfect example of why we need to open health data up to larger communities of data scientists. It's a pretty uncommon approach to healthcare data, but very useful for ranking symptoms. Okay, we're gonna move on to question number two. And so the winner for the predictive diagnosis question the best computational approach for predicting a diagnosis based on patient reported data goes to Ambit Inc.'s data and analytics team, led by Birnur Ospas Erdem, Vice President and Head of Analytics and Data Products at Ambit. So 
So the code created by this team was able to predict diagnosis in uh, the disorders represented um, significantly better than the example solution that was created as the base solution. Uh, it was quite elegant. However, um, a as I think many of us suspected, uh, for most of the neurodevelopmental disorders analyzed because of the heterogeneity of these conditions and because of the overlap in symptoms between conditions, uh, this solution still predicted the wrong diagnosis about 40% of the time. So, you know, to me, this is very clear, oops, this is very clear that, um, you know, even with highly uh, predictive machine learning, we can't see the diagnosis. We don't know what it is. You know, if these methods can't do it, we can't expect clinicians to do it. So um, we really do need earlier comprehensive genetic screening. Okay. So for question number three, best use of the RareX data set. The award goes to Mefford Lab at St. Jude Children's Hospital, led by Heather Mefford, Principal Investigator at St. Jude Children's Research Hospital. Congratulations. <laughs> so this academic research group has an ongoing natural history study in CHD2, one of the rare disorders represented in the RareX data sets. The group did a beautiful job of incorporating the RareX data into their own data sets, extending what is currently known about phenotypes in this condition. Very nice. Okay, and our last award, uh, in, and this is in the um, therapeutic hypotheses, is for the most novel approach for potential therapeutic research, and the award goes to the Guan Lab at the University of Michigan, led by Yuan Feng Guan, Associate Professor in the Department of Computational Medicine and Bioinformatics at the University of Michigan. Congratulations. So one of our partners in this uh, challenge was an AI company called Netramark. Uh, Netramark sort of they used their AI technology to identify relationships potentially causal between different kinds of um, symptoms and different conditions within this data set. And then they sort of teed that up for analysis. And the Guan team focused on immune dysfunction as a potential cause of some of the disparate symptoms as seen in several of the neurodevelopmental disorders on the platform. And they proposed ways to further investigate underlying immune dysfunction as a potential path for future therapy in several of the conditions represented on the platform, most notably Wiedemann-Steiner syndrome and FOXP1 syndrome. So with that, um, I think I, I would like to, to bring this to kind of a close and, and say that I think if you take anything away from this, and I think you can tell we're pretty excited about it, but if you take anything away from this challenge and from um, what we've been able to accomplish in, in this, our first, by the way, Open Science Data Challenge, will not be our last, um, it is that patient-owned data is powerful, right? So all of this started with the data collection and the partnerships that we created with patient advocacy groups and with individual patients and families where they submit their data and they tell us, I want this data used for research and I want it used widely and I want it used on an open science platform. And so that is what we're here for, that's what we believe in um, and that is, is what in partnership we will continue to do. Thank you. Thank you. We actually, despite starting late, have a few minutes. If there are questions, we'd be happy to take them. Congratulations on the Open Science Challenge. I'm wondering if there might be an opportunity to know what the next challenge is and when we can alert our computational teams as to when they should start working on it. Yep, um, so that is, that is a burning question. Uh, when is the next Open Science Data Challenge? What is the focus of the next Open Science Data Challenge? Uh, and what will the specific challenge questions be? So. Um, we don't really know any of those answers yet, other than to say that it will be in 2024. So we'll, we will be doing another Open Science Data Challenge next year in 2024. Um, 
this challenge focused on uh, neurodevelopmental disorders, and we did that for, for one big reason, and that is that the RareX platform is still pretty young, and we got started in neurodevelopmental disorders, and so that's where we have the most data. So it made sense to capitalize on where we have the most data. But the RareX platform supports many, many different rare diseases and di rare disease organizations. And so it's really important to us to open that up more broadly next year. So all I can say about the focus is that it won't just be in neurodevelopmental disorders. Um, we're still working out exactly what that will look like. The other thing that I can say with some certainty is that we will be incorporating more um, genetic analysis. So we, we will be pushing very, very hard to get more genetic data in and working with communities uh, to do everything we can to do that, uh, including accepting genetic test reports in other languages and curating them with people who are native speakers in those languages. Um, so more to come. So from our side, I can uh, tell you the excitement that we have uh, from the challenge that just unfolded, the fantastic insights that are coming forward with this small data set. So imagine uh, when the data set grows and all those other modalities goes in, what are the possibilities? Possibilities are endless. So we are very excited for the next challenge. Thank you.